Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. Stricter measures to come into effect as the nation battles increasing cases of COVID 19. Retrofitting works at the Respiratory Hospital are advancing, and St. Lucians in the diaspora contribute to their homeland through education. The National Emergency Management Advisory Council, NEMAC, on Friday held a consultation on stricter measures in the national response to COVID-19. The revision of measures comes as the island continues to record increasing cases of the virus and two related deaths. Jesse Leos has more. Stricter measures to take effect come Monday, 16th November 2020. That is the word from the Honorable Prime Minister during the just concluded press conference to update the nation on the COVID-19 response. We have the authorities, the Honorable Prime Minister and also the Acting Commissioner of Police included that they have determined that the protocols implemented two weeks ago, they are not working. We had 56 new cases registered in the last 14 days. The first fatalities recorded here in St. Lucia, uh, that is two individuals succumbing uh, to COVID-19. And one patient uh, we heard from the CMO, Dr. Sharon Belmar george is now in critical care. Uh, the Chief Medical Officer did indicate that based on the rate of transmission, cases could triple in a fortnight if there isn't across-the-board compliance. And coming out of today's uh, NEMAC meeting, that is the National Emergency Management Advisory Committee meeting, the Prime Minister did announce the amended protocols aimed at further limiting unnecessary social interaction here in St. Lucia. Work from home where possible. Again, our intention is to work with the private sector and also the public sector to cause those persons who do not need to go to work and that they can work from home, that they do so. And we're imploring the cooperation of all businesses um, to review their current operation practices and where possible cause people to stay home. Business operating hours will remain at nine o'clock at night with the exception of bars. Protocols have also been tightened. We have further limitations on gatherings. All bars will be closed from four o'clock in the afternoon. Those bars slash grocery stores in the communities can continue to offer liquor on a grab and go basis. But all places that only our bars will be asked to cease operations at four o'clock and up until four o'clock they're only allowed to practice grab and go persons are not to purchase liquor at these premises and consume them on the premises or to have any form of social gathering on those premises alcohol sales protocols for food establishments and bars have also been amended we're reducing church services back to 25 people. The funerals afterwards would be limited to 25 people. We're asking for the suspension of all weddings, ceremonies, asking for the suspension of all social activities, including sports. Anything that would cause persons to come together, we're asking that to be suspended. So even in terms of your own home, to stop from inviting your own family members for the next two weeks over to your home. So we would like to see a complete suspension of any form of social gatherings. A prohibition on all activities, gyms included, will also take effect. Uh, as mentioned earlier, we also had the Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Milton Daisy, on hand, and he did indicate that there has been a vast improvement on the mandatory mask laws, especially in the capital. However, they continue to contend with the illicit border entry, having arrested individuals just recently. Also, we saw the continuation of persons coming in through illegal means, and that... Um, so much so that um, last week we took in at least four, four individuals who had um, been entering, who had entered the island through the back door, as we say. 
The amended protocols, which will take effect on Monday, 16th November 2020, will be reviewed by the authorities in a week's time. From the Government Information Service, I am Jesse Leons reporting. Retrofitting works at the Respiratory Hospital are advancing as health officials move to accommodate the rising number of COVID-19 patients. More in this report. In March 2020, in anticipation of the COVID-19 pandemic and community spread, the government of St. Lucia proactively moved the operations of the 133-year-old Victoria Hospital to the OKEU Hospital. The government's team of engineers then got to work transforming these buildings into the island's full-fledged respiratory hospital. We quickly retrofitted um, to just meet the needs at the time. But as, the, as time went by, we, we looked at our different sources of financing where we had the Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project. There's a component under this project where you could activate in the event of any emergency. And the pandemic was actually an emergency. The World Bank provided 5.8 million EC dollars for the further expansion and the transformation of the wards to specifically accommodate the possible influx of COVID-19 patients. This included the increase in the numbers of beds and improvements to the ventilation, electrical, and central cooling systems. What we've done in these areas is we've removed the walls, some internal walls, and a lot of stuff that was in there during the normal use when they were using it as VH, and we've put in individual rooms and the bathrooms for each of these rooms. And we've put in staff bases in all of these areas with new walls, new floors, new ceilings, as well as putting an extraction system with UV to help kill the, the virus as that air is being extracted. And we've put in AC units. Now in all of the wards, we have that, we have a door vent installed on all the doors. We also have a viewing panel, which the nurses can view the patients from the corridor instead of entering the room to see how the patients are doing. And the bathroom is on this side. It has a shower, a face basin, and a toilet. That same concept runs through all the rooms in that area. Due to the age of the Victoria Hospital, the contractors faced several unexpected delays and structural challenges. The biggest challenge for me and our construction team has been the procurement of materials. We had to order stuff in and it took us months to come in. Here is the pediatric ward. In here we have 12 rooms. This first room here is a nurse's quarters and the others are wards for patients. Um, as the other rooms, each room has an extractor fan coming down in the room. All the doors as well have their door grills installed. Um, the AC units are all what we're missing within this area to be installed to balance the air pressure in this area. A lovely amount of water um, in the entrance, as you can see that. Uh, this is a, a health hazard. Anybody can slip and fall in the, at, at night. Uh, if the light is turned off and I have to walk through, I can easily slip and fall and hurt myself. I'm a COVID patient. There is an acute danger to scaremongering, which may inevitably lead to trepidations of patients presenting themselves for treatment at the respiratory facility. What, what has been mentioned, you know, a lot of it is warranted, but uh, a little exaggerated. Um, you know, the, the areas where we saw the rains, you know, that was due to, you know, some issues that were experienced in the roof. At the time of the exponential increase in the numbers, we had to uh, make do with the space that we had at the time, and which really does not reflect what really the, the real rehabilitation which took place in the hospital. So basically, um, we had to make do with the different space areas that we had. This facility is scheduled to be complete within the next week and will accommodate 100 patients. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Embassy of Taiwan continues to lend support to St. Lucia's national fight against the pandemic with another PPE donation. Herma de Mark reports. The Government of Taiwan has facilitated the donation of 30,000 face masks to help in the fight against COVID-19. 
the Honorary President of the Taiwanese Chamber of Commerce of North America, Gerald Wong, donated the face masks. The donation will aid in the protection of frontline workers and citizens of St. Lucia. Addressing the handing over ceremony, the Taiwanese Ambassador, His Excellency Peter Chen, says joint efforts will continue in the fight against COVID-19. We will continue to work together to combat COVID-19 and promote mutually beneficial exchanges between Taiwan, St. Lucia, and the United States. Just last week, I was proud to join Minister for Commerce, Bernie Felix, and Ambassador Teddy Latela to launch several events for the first ever St. Lucia Taiwan Business Partnership Week. Our goal is to promote St. Lucia's advantage and encourage more trade, investment, and tourism. I hope business leaders in Taiwan and the U.S. will learn more about St. Lucia and become as captivated by it as I have. The U.S. Ambassador to the Eastern Caribbean, Her Excellency Linda Tagliatella, expresses her elation with the donation. She says that it reinforces the deep bond of affection amongst the U.S., Taiwan, and St. Lucia. Her Excellency Tagliatella says the coronavirus knows no boundary and reiterates that wearing a mask can stop the virus and save lives. President Gerald Wong, speaking on his donation, expresses the importance of global collaboration in health efforts and pandemic prevention. He says that not only can Taiwan help in the global efforts, but is also helping through such donations. Minister of Health and Wellness Honorable Senator Mary Isaac, who was also present at the handing over ceremony, took the opportunity to thank contributors for the timely donation. This is coming out of very... Um, very critical time because without your support in terms of providing us with those PPEs, we would not have been able to assist our frontline workers and other people of St. Lucia that we are providing with this mask and these other PPEs that you have provided for us. Meanwhile, Minister for External Affairs, Honorable Sarah Flood Buber, expresses thanks to Taiwan for their continued well, support and calls for Taiwan's inclusion into the World Health Assembly. Clearly, we have seen Taiwan's own efforts in combating this epidemic. Taiwan has been a great leader for the world in terms of how to successfully deal with this epidemic. And not just to fulfill the mantra that we've set ourselves in the SDGs of no one left behind. The whole world will stand to benefit if Taiwan is included around the table. The World Health Assembly is the body which determines policies of the World Health Organization. The assembly is held annually in Geneva, Switzerland. From the Government Information Service, Humedi Mark reporting. A quantity of microscopes has been donated to the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development. This is one of the latest charitable gestures of the St. Lucians living in the diaspora. Jesse Leos has the details. 25 compound microscopes were presented to education officials this week. A St. Lucian living in the diaspora is the benefactor of this generous donation. Nelville Alphonse is resident in the United Kingdom with a background in the medical field. Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, Her Excellency Dr. Jocelyn Fletcher, commends the single-handed effort of Alphonse. This is the microscope, one of the microscopes that Nelvin Alphonse has donated to the Ministry of Education. Now, as Mr. Matra said, it is very costly. One individual, and he is just one of the many we have, who are not members of associations, but they're individuals in the diaspora, sending many things. And we have a, a lot of groups and associations that come together and send things as a whole. But we have individuals who, on their own, gather supplies and donate them to St. Lucia. And Mr. Nelvin Alphonse from the United Kingdom is one such person in our diaspora. Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, Michelle Charles, informed that secondary school students will be the ones benefiting from this donation. We definitely have to thank Mr. Nelvin Alphonse for this contribution. It is not just the ordinary contribution, but one which is targeted at one of our interventions at the Ministry of Education. 
we, have, we definitely know that this will have a profound impact on our STEAM areas, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. And so we are going to put this device, well, this piece of equipment to good use. I understand that these are compound microscopes and they are going to be utilized within our secondary school science programs. Natural Sciences Curriculum Officer in the Department of Education believes the inclusion of the equipment in its science programs will spark greater interest in these subject areas. Science is a big priority for the Department of Education. And as such, you know, a lot of resources is being placed into STEM education. And when we have persons from the diaspora, like Mr. Nelvin Alphonse, who demonstrate his nationalism and how patriotic he is by making such a great contribution, you have to admire this. And we say a special thank you to him and other persons like him who would make their contribution in such a valuable way. The donation was channeled through the collaborative efforts of the Diaspora Affairs Unit and the St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF. Alison Mathra is the SSDF's executive director. We know already that our children are challenged with math and science in the math and sciences area. And of course, we are challenged by you know, financial constraints. And so this presentation is very meaningful. I want to take this opportunity to reach out to the diaspora, whether it's through the associations of St. Lucians living overseas or through individuals. We welcome everything that you can send to us that we can pass on to the people in need. Immediately following the Microscope's presentation, a barrel of school supplies donated by the Caribbean American Heritage Foundation of Texas was handed over to the SSDF for its Our Boys Matter program. The government of St. Lucia has engaged its diaspora as development partners, exploring human and social synergies beyond remittance transfers. Ambassador Dr. Fletcher is pleased with the response so far. From the Government Information Service, I am Jessie Leons reporting. The Zooks Untitled sponsor, Indibet, has handed over a check of U.S. $10,000 to the Ministry of Education. This amount was pledged by Indibet and will go towards providing laptops for the underprivileged children of St. Lucia who are unable to attend school due to the COVID-19 pandemic. During the 2020 Caribbean Premier League, CPL, Indibet agreed to provide U.S. $100 for every boundary scored, U.S. $150 for every six hit, and U.S. $200 for every wicket taken by the St. Lucia Zooks. Indibet further agreed to top up the contribution to U.S. $10,000. Sumo Plazi is the representative for the St. Lucia Zooks and Indibet. This is specifically to go towards her students in need um, that are suffering somewhat from this pandemic. We'd like to say to the Ministry of Education that we are behind their backs and we are supporting them. Indibet is, is pleased to be on board and certainly they look forward to the success of those students. It gives me great pleasure to express our most profound thanks to the Zooks, Anusha Zooks, and Indibet for their generous donation of US $10,000. That gift will come in very handy, especially since it is intended for students who are economically challenged, given that now we've had to transition to online learning. We know that that will go a long way to lend the necessary assistance to those most in need. Uh, it is good to know that we have benevolent partners like you, and I'm even more compelled to lend my full support <laughs> uh, to what you do, not only in terms of sports, but for the broader social development of our people. So thank you very much on behalf of the ministry and the beautiful children of this nation. Thank you. The donation was made on Thursday, 12 November 2020. The blood bank department of the Ezra Long Laboratory informs the public of a blood drive at the Babono Multipurpose Center on Sunday, November 15, 2020, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Donors are asked to have a proper breakfast and take any required medication before coming to donate blood. 
COVID-19 protocols will be in full effect. Donors are asked to wear their masks. The hands of persons will be sanitized with an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. Also, temperature checks will be undertaken before starting the donation process. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program of Babono, Castries, Grosile and Susimilet regions that payment for the month of October will commence from Monday 16th November to Friday 20th November 2020 at the Castries City Hall from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. daily. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Keeping hands clean is important for good health. However, after a disaster, staying clean is hard to do, especially if there is no pipe borne water. Simple things you can do to stay clean and remain healthy are wash your hands with soap and clean water. If these are not available, sanitizers with alcohol are options. Wash your hands many times during the day, before preparing food, eating, caring for a sick person or baby, treating a cut, wound or sore. Wash hands after using the bathroom, changing diapers, caring for animals, caring for sick or injured persons after handling garbage. Washing your hands is one of the best ways to prevent illness. For further information, contact the Bureau of Health Education at telephone number 468-5349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle of Creole. Merci, Otage Janelle. Monsieur, Madame, Département qui n'est pas Pour information à gouvernement, c'est le CGIS et Télévision Nationale Pia, NTN, qu'à vous êtes aux nouvelles à Creole, vous êtes aux Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur, Madame, avant nous, comment ces nouvelles-là, nous voulons le bâton qui, moi, je suis à ce développement, meeting, ça veut discussion, ni mac, côté premier ministre, là, qui a conduit avec toutes les gogouèques, les mêmes cabinet avec les autres monde qui engagé à ce fait Nimac, um, ça nous apprend c'est que la décision j'ai faite pour réduire à ce monde qui a été qui a servir l'église ça c'est monde qui a assemblé à l'église il était secret il devait mener des pour 25 euh Westoa um, par une pièce um, service à Westoa pour à toi Westoa ça ça a été de bout um, pièce fait pièce um, Gwan festin, tout sa kanyan bout. Um, ba sa se um, kabawe, kay femi de pi akatwe, apre midi, tout kabawe. Ek, kom la koutim kou ki te anonse, um, volontèman, ou si pose resta kay de pi neve, pou jis uh, se ke li deme a oswe ça c'est un bon matin ça c'est neve oswe pour que c'est que bon matin nous avons plus nouvelle à ce ça euh en semaine à ce développement meeting ni mac là bon compagnie de l'eau cette le sirasco j'ai annoncé qui travail pour nettoyer et fouiller dans de l'eau John Compton j'ai commencé grand réserve de l'eau ça là qui a pour service de l'eau pour commerce 93000 monde en face à nord cette le siècle aussi en cette paresse à cela oui j'ai trouvé uh, affecté sévèrement par la l'homme zodi qui a plein dans ça là à résultat de good low go la pli qui tombé en pays à pour cette année qui passé ça c'est depuis temps trouvé à bâti à l'année 1995 travail que j'ai fait présentement pour uh, tirer zodi à dame là c'est deuxième pas un projet pour redévelopper réserve ça là premier pas c'était pour construire une place pour déposer toutes ces ordres qui étaient uh, posées en fond dans l'eau ça là c'est John Compton facilité ça là pour déposer ce dans il a fini bâti à complète et il uh, bâti plus bas en route la rivière qui a sorti dans l'eau ça là et aussi il est capacité à pour chebé 105 cubic mètres ordres qui a sorti à Dame de l'eau, parce que c'est Dame de l'eau, John Compton. Projet pour Dredge Dame là, commencé mon en à mois d'octobre 2002. Projet Dredge ça là, eh bien, pour nettoyer un fond Dame de l'eau, John Compton, qui est-ce que ça pour procurer sécurité de l'eau, pour faire ça dans notre pays, a, qui a improuvé la capacité de Dame là, et aussi assister pour service de l'eau, en face à ça là, qui est plus reliable, et uh, faire une contribution, et uh, qui faire une contribution, Ça c'est à façon qui est plus significant pour l'économie nationale. 
Sétlesi. Premier ministre Sétlesi, qui est aussi ministre des Affaires Finances, honorable Alain Chasse, j'ai annoncé qu'il travaille déjà en route pour établir meilleures facilités à l'hôpital Victoria, qui est là à présent pour adresser la maladie des étouffements. Premier ministre Chasse a déclaré que le gouvernement a poussé le projet à nuit comme jour pour improuver l'opération de diverses facilités à l'hôpital Salah. C'est le Premier ministre Chasse qui travaille à fait présentement pour placer la capacité de l'hôpital à sortir 82 couches pour 126 couches. Le Premier ministre a aussi dit qu'il travaille à continuer pour improuver à ce manière l'établissement Salah à bâti. Le Premier ministre Chasse dit que le projet là qui a financé par la Banque mondiale et qui a eu aussi l'équipement médical pour traiter ces gens qui sont à l'hôpital. Le plus bon est maintenant le directeur exécutif pour l'hôpital Victoria et Owen King, Nancy Francis, de parler de ces situations qui concernent le public là, là il est pour conditionner l'hôpital Victoria et parler de plusieurs situations qui ont affecté l'opération de l'hôpital là. Par exemple, l'année à présent, plus de monde qui a tué pour le traitement des maladies de corona. Et ça a occasionné plusieurs problèmes pour le travail qui était déjà commencé. Mais comme le travail ça a fait, et puis à l'eau vitesse, tout de suite, toute facilité a été en place pour mettre les gens qui ont reçu le traitement plus cordial et ça ne sauve. Consultant ingénieur pour le projet de mouvement chimé Rodney B. Tabricious Roberts a déclaré que le degré et la qualité de travail qui a fait à ce morceau chimé, c'est un homme qui a un haut degré de travail ingénieur. Robert Cosé et Pénouvelle à Coyol, a un travail qui a continué pour ajouter des ouins en plus pour chimé Rodney B. pour Gozile. Le projet a fini, l'autre passager qui a navigé à ce quatre ouins chimé en JD qui a existé présentement. Robert qui a conduit le travail à la direction au ministère des Affaires Constitution et Travaux, expliqué à ces façons que le travail a fait pour faciliter le projet qui plus avancé à travailler à ce morceau chimé ça là. Si nous avons mis des avant, avant de venir et puis l'autre calme de Mathieu, et de nous avons des pieds chimés, nous avons pris en bas, nous avons mis des seulement puisque si on a de l'eau qui a coulé et qui n'a pas coulé, on dit dans le canal même, de l'eau pas de l'eau au canal, n'importe quoi. Nous faisons bas avec un gré qui a coulé en French drain. Si on a de l'eau, ça a coulé en ça, et qui a coulé sorti, il y a des vies entre eux, qui nous besoin entre eux. Si on a de l'eau, c'est ça qu'on a fait là. Il y aura fait back là présent avec tout le bagage qui allait bien et puis de manière à nous remettre ce roche là dedans avec moins content. Bon, des fois ça te chime, monsieur ingénieur. Je savais si le gouvernement avait pu se déposer pour faire parce que l'année où il y a un business, tout le monde a fait ça, l'année où il y a un peu pour agrandir. Est-ce que ça a été la tête pour une discussion pour est-ce que ça a coûté une pièce là à côté de nous? compenser avec pour 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 ces conditions mais à des défis à plat est-ce que la tenir pièce situation comme ça non pas tenir pour compenser pièce pour ça nous fait c'est nous assurer nous fait ça nous raconte les homework nous et malgré nous prend en clair encore il y aura que corridor chemin c'est grandeur chemin c'est que ça gouvernement mais nous pas prend pièce des pièces pour si nous te fait il y a un nombre de bâtiments qu'on a tenu avant, qui est allé en mettant côté où aller pour ce monde-là. Nous devons tenir pour point à dans tel monde, puis dans jusqu'à ce monde. Nous ne devons pas faire ça. Nous nous devons tout le monde rester bien. Ça y est, tenu. Si nous grandis chez mes adam manières, nous ne pouvons pas prendre ni mon manière ça là. Et mon compte manière nous a fait là. Le projet ça l'a fini qui a coûté 15 millions de dollars et qui a eu un assez plus avancé mon chemin. En cette ici, et que je mets ça là, le travail là qu'a fait, on souhaite tout, on souhaite 8 heures, on souhaite pour que 6 heures bon matin. Et que M. Madame, ça c'est côté de notre bout de nouvelle là, je vous remercie autant pour regarder, je vous remercie pour l'invitation pour jeter, puis moi encore, si tu es conservé la vie, les gens présentent une autre nouvelle à Koyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon fin de semaine, et souple, souple, pour que vous conçu avec les affaires maladies corona, c'est pour sauver la vie ou même avec la femme, avec le résident à jour. Et que c'est mon vieux président général. Merci à Pil Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.